again, this is part of a series. I hope that you watched the previous videos in this series. Hopefully there's an annotation on the screen or a link in the description of the video to the full playlist because you'll probably be lost if you haven't watched them. This is uh, somewhat advanced stuff. Uh, and just stuff that's hard to find information on, so I thought I'd do some tutorials on. And today we're going to be mounting an Android system partition, which is the main file system for your Android device, um, as we write, so we can make modifications to, and we're going to be installing uh, BusyBox, uh, a fuller version of BusyBox on the phone. I'm using the Motorola G here. Uh, this should work with any device that um, uses Fastboot, which is most devices. It's not a... Um, most Android devices, Samsung does not use it, but I think for most part, other uh, manufacturers use fast boot. It's the most common bootloader. Uh, you can get into the bootloader once you uh, have turned on USB debugging by typing sudo adb reboot bootloader. That's where my phone is right now. Also, as I mentioned in previous tutorials, um, tools we're using are fast boot. ADB and Aboot IMG in this series. So go ahead and install them. This is how you do it on a Debian system. Uh, use whatever package manager you your system uses and um, those programs should be in there. They might be slightly different name, but ADB, Fastboot, and Aboot IMG. Once you're at the bootloader, let's list out here. You can see I've got two uh, files here. I've got our twerp recovery project image, our team win recovery project image, and a version of BusyBox for Android devices. It's been compiled for ARM Linux devices. And so we want to get this installed onto our Android device. So first thing you need to do is get that uh, file right there. And you can compile your own. BusyBox is free and open source, but if you want to get one that's already compiled, there are already some out there. You can get them different places. Be sure you get it from some place you trust. I'm recommending this. Uh, one right here just because that's the one that I used. I don't know the guy. I'm just taking a leap of faith <laughs> in this case that there's nothing malicious in here. Uh, but if you Google search GitHub BusyBox Android, you can get from there. Your phone might already have a version of BusyBox on it, but it may not be a full version, it may not have all the tools you want. This one here has pretty full versions. So this one has an already compiled version of BusyBox. Of course, you can go to the BusyBox website, get the source code and compile it yourself. But this file right here is the binary file. Again, giving trust into this guy here. And then we'll click raw view that will download the binary. I copied it to my folder here, I renamed it. He had it named BusyBox-Android. I renamed it just BusyBox, but that's the file right there. Uh, and if we do file, busy box, it will tell us that it is a um, ARM compiled Linux uh, execu executable. So now that we have that, we want to put it on the phone, but we need to mount our system partition as writable. So again, you go, whoops, did that in the other video too. <laughs> You're going to want to run this command, sudo adb reboot bootloader, and that'll bring you to the bootloader which is unlocked, we did that in the first tutorial. And now we want to boot our recovery image because that will give us a root shell in the recovery mode. So we'll say sudo adb, I'm sorry, sudo fastboot boot our twerp image. It's downloading its phone, booting, the phone will root, reboot into the recovery um, image that we just loaded. Again, that's loading it to RAM. We didn't make any changes to the actual hard drive on the phone. Now that we have that, now we can sudo adb shell. And I just want to point out, to not confuse you, I'm using sudo just because I need permission on my particular uh, computer. I have it set up so that only sudo or root can access the Android device. That's why I'm using sudo. That does not give you the root on the phone. The reason I have root on the phone is because the recovery image is set to default to root for the shell. Now we need to figure out what partition is our system partition and mounted. Because if we type out mount here, you can see recovery has mounted a number of partitions, uh, but not a system one. So we need to go to our internal uh, hard drive, figure out what partition is our, our system partition. So uh, if you watched previous tutorial, I use parted, which is a tool that's very commonly found on Linux systems uh, for modifying and getting info about partitions. And our internal um, hard drive is under dev block 
MMC BLK. It's the first one, so zero, we'll hit enter. And if we type out print, it will print out all the partitions and their labels. And we want to mount the system one. So it's partition 36. Remember that, because I'll probably forget in about a minute when I go to use it. Um, again, if we list out our root partition here, there is a system folder. We can list system, see if there's anything in there. There is a bin folder. Is there anything in that? Again, this is a RAM disk. There's nothing in there, so we can kind of overwrite that, or we can create our own folder to mount to. Uh, so the two ways you can do this. We can say mount device block, uh, the first block device, which is zero partition, I think I said 36, and we'll hit enter. And this particular recovery image knows to mount that based on the label. So if we now list out our root system folder, you can now see that there's files in there. So there are files in there. Uh, let's you mount that. And that doesn't look like the right partition. Did I say 36? Scroll up. There, I got cut off. Let's up arrow a few times to check this out again. Print system, yeah, it's 36. Okay, and it's, yeah, that's it because it's uh, over a gig in size. So it's, it's fairly big. So let's go ahead and quit out of that. Check mount, I unmounted that, correct? Yes, so you can mount it there, or if for some reason you already have something mounted or you feel uncomfortable putting it on the system folder there because there was a file or a folder in there. Because if we list out now, we can see that that bin folder is back. You can also, you know, mount it wherever you want. You can say make dir, I'll just make an MNT directory, and then I can say mount our device, block device, the first block device, partition 36. Um, MNT and now I can go into the MNT and list and there we go we have our partitions and if we CD into bin and list out here I'll list out um, busy you can see there is a busy box already there your phone may already have busy box again a lighter weight so you, you know either back obviously back up the partition before you make any changes to it before you even mount it back it up uh, you can rename that or delete it if you already have it backed up somewhere. So what I'll do is, that, that's actually the one we were about to install because I've already put it on my phone. What I'll do is I'll remove uh, BusyBox. Okay, it's removed. And if I exit out now, clear the screen, what I can do is I can su sudo adb put BusyBox. Whoops. Never try to autocomplete with adb. It just makes things annoying. adb put busy box uh, to our system bin folder. And I obviously typed something wrong. Oh, I said put and it's supposed to be push. There we go. It said it put it there. Let's go ahead and log back in system bin list and actually let's oh that's right <laughs> remember where you mount stuff because I just put it in the wrong directory for a second there I thought I just wiped out everything in that directory no I put it in the wrong place because I was showing you how to mount things in different places MNT BIN now shell see it's fun when I mess up because you guys get to laugh at me and it also might help you if you make the same mistake list out we have all the files here we'll say list busy box dash H is not in the default list program although if you use the one in busy box it is and you can see it's there it is not executable though so you'll probably want to change mod plus X busy box and right there is now executable. And let's go ahead and reboot my phone. So we'll just say reboot from here.
It's thinking about it. Oh, <clears throat> with the twerp recovery, if the screen is shut off and you go to reboot, um, that's fine. If you try to reboot into bootloader and the screen's off, it, it basically, if you try to reboot when you're in twerp and the screen is off, it like confuses and just restarts the phone, which is fine if you're just rebooting. If you're trying to reboot into the bootloader, click the power button, turn the screen on first, otherwise it will just boot into your regular operating system, which is fine because that's what we're doing now anyway. Get our little load screen here. Once it's all booted, I will then use sudo adb shell to get back in there. On the phone right now, I still don't have root, device, uh, root permissions. That's something we'll get into in a future tutorial. Just building up to that. There we go. I'll hit enter, device not found, give it a second, okay. Now if your screen is locked, which normally I have my screen locked, um, I unlocked, I turned off the pin for this video. Um, you'll have to log in with the pin before you can access the shell. Obvious security reasons. On newer Android devices, older Android devices, you, know, you, you could log into the shell before the phone even finishes booting. But now I can type in BusyBox and you can see a list of all the programs that are available within BusyBox. You got uh, FTP stuff, you've got your HTTP server, so you can start up a server on there. You have your chur root, which you need root to really work with. Um, so yeah, you have all these commands at your disposal. Now, if you haven't linked them, then they're not going to run. You're going to have to either run. So let's say I say list LHA. It's saying uh, it doesn't know what the H command is, which makes human readable uh, for the file. So if I say list dash LA, you can see it lists all the files, but uh, the file size is in bytes, I think. Uh, so a little hard to read when it's a bigger file. So normally I like using a dash H. If I do busybox ls dash L -A -L -L -A -L -H -A, you can see it does run, even color code stuff for you, which is nice. So you can see already the list command, the ls command that's on the device is not as advanced as the ls command that is in the busy box. This is also true when it comes to mounting stuff and changing permissions. Like if I wanted to change permissions, something would change mod. With the busy box version, I can dash x. If I try doing that with the regular version, I have to use, um, you know, the, the, the hex codes or the, the, the number codes here. So take that into account. If you go back to the website we got our busy box from, he does have an install sh. So we can click on that and look at it. And um, what it does here, somewhere in here, it tries to look link through all the different um, BusyBox commands. And uh, let's see. Look through there. I, I think it's yeah, I'm pretty sure it's this one in here somewhere. It links through all the BusyBox commands and tries to replace the system. Uh, programs such as LS with the BusyBox, linking it to BusyBox uh, and changes the permissions. So uh, this also script will also manually copy it over to your phone for you, or it will try to automatically copy it over the phone for you. So look at that. See, it, it's using ADB shell to mount that. You have to obviously have root on the phone first. So I don't know. I haven't tried running this script, but I... Uh, have, oh, here we go. This is where it's listing all the BusyBox commands and linking them, removing the original and linking the new. So you can do that. I haven't tried running this script, but I, I did the same exact thing manually uh, based off this script. So look into that. Uh, otherwise, you have to type BusyBox and the command for every command you want to run that uses BusyBox. Up to you how you do it. I haven't uh, really changed anything on my system yet. Rather new phone. So... But again, always back everything up first. So that's installing BusyBox and getting rewrite uh, permissions on your system. Obviously, it's only read write when you're in the recovery, but you really, really, really don't want your system partition writable all the time. And in fact, very rarely do you make changes to it. You make changes to it and then leave it. You know, <laughs> it's, it's not something you should be modifying all the time. And of course, as I said a few times, back everything up first. So I thank you for watching this video. I thank you for enjoying it. If you did kind of advanced topics, 
but I tried to simplify it for you as much as possible. Hope you watched all the previous videos or else you might be a little lost on this. Um, not a whole lot of information out there on these topics, so that's why I'm doing these videos. Um, if you liked it, be sure to let me know, comment below, like, share, subscribe, uh, and as always, I hope you visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Should be a link to that in the description. And I hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.